15 years ago, I, uh, I got to attend the worst and best exercise I've ever been to. And, and I'm going to explain that. So this exercise was what I consider my epiphany exercise. It, it was one that I was only at as an observer, and I was really new in my exercise career. And it started out with a lot of detail for a tabletop exercise, and, and it was the very first slide. It was a bright and sunny day, homecoming at a packed crowd at stadium football, when three crop dusters appear over the horizon. And I don't know why the exercise designers put so much detail in it, but the homecoming queen was being crowned at the 50-yard line. Not important, but they had a lot of those information. When those three crop dusters got over the stadium, they started spraying the stadium with an oily, acidic liquid. And the homecoming queen was last seen under a crush heading for an exit. It was a disaster, and everyone in the room started getting to work. We were 150 people in that room, and they started talking about treatment, triage, transport, staging, resources, mobilizing mutual aid. It was, at that point, I was like, this is a great exercise. This was not long after September 11th, and people were trying to figure out the problems. They were untying the knots. When 15 minutes into this really good discussion, the exercise facilitator steps up to the front of the room and says, oh, by the way, we just got an update. Plane number one has just crashed into the, uh, the department headquarters for the fire department taking out a lot of that specialized resources that we're talking about. So if you're in the room and you work at this building, raise your hand. You guys are now all observers. And at that point, the fire department was ticked off. Like, they're, they're being set up to fail. And I was like, well, that seems unfair. And, and again, I'm just an observer taking notes. And so the fire guys are, like, upset, and they're, they're chawing amongst themselves. But everyone else in the room is busy. And they're still working on those resources. And how do we do it without this? And how do we do it without that? 20 minutes later, facilitator steps back up to the front and he says, by the way, play number two just hit the emergency operations center. Kamikaze right into it. Who works there? You're all observers now. There was an audible groan in the room and people were upset. And I'm like, I wonder what objective this is trying to, to exercise. And some smart aleck in the back, not me, it's usually me, not me, said, hey, where's third plane going to hit? Nakatomi Plaza? An obvious reference to Die Hard. Die Hard, for those of you who don't know, uh, took Jack McClain, uh, an NYPD officer who was stuck in this, this building. It took him to save the people in this building from a terror attack, despite all the best efforts of the Los Angeles Police Department, Fire Department, FBI, uh, uh, and, and other groups. And he goes, <laughs> not quite. It just took out your water supply. And at that point, the exercise was over. The guy yelling out was what the FBI would call a clue that you've lost the room. They took out the water and said, you, you can't do this. And so I remember looking around and people going, how are, we supposed to, like, how are we supposed to fight this situation? When we learn just a few 15 minutes later that a, a, a woman who appears to be nine months pregnant in active birth is rushed to the front of the line past the walking wounded, past the, uh, the people who had been triaged lesser. She gets into the emergency department and she opens up her belly bomb and detonates. Serious. Was, they took out the hospital. Now, there is not a single player left in the room. But we're supposed to talk about this for another hour. We were supposed to accomplish all of these goals in three hours. That's how long they gave us for this scenario. And I remember at that point thinking, how, as a young exercise designer, how could I make sure that this never happens to one of my exercises? I don't want people to go, uh, this is ridiculous. So I have five standard thinking guidelines. I don't like standard operating procedures, and I don't like rules. Uh, if you know me, you know that's true. But I think five things that you should think about if you ever get tasked with designing an exercise. Because this actually happens more with people new to designing exercise than it does to people who've, who've designed a lot of exercises. The first one, write down that scope and objectives that you defined at the be very beginning. Whatever your scenario is, write it down and stick to it. And when you do that, that gives you the ability to say no. You can say no, and you're going to have to get really good at saying no if you're an exercise designer. If somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I know it has to be a biological exercise. And the, the scenario was T2 mycotoxin, a, a fungus synthesized acid, because that's what the funding said it had to be, a biological. Can we use crop dusters to spray that over a crowd? Sure, I could go with that exercise. That would actually be a pretty good exercise. Let's, let's go with it. Can we use those same planes, the kamikaze, the important buildings around the community? No. No, no. What about a suicide bomber taking out the hospital? Again, someone should have said no. And, and we didn't actually test what the funders wanted us to test. We had to do the exercise over. 
So when you're designing an exercise, and, and we're all experiencing this, especially with the new CMS rules, everyone wants to hop on your train. Don't let people hang on your train. You, you have a lot more limitations of what you know, and you, you see this a lot when people design exercises, and at the very end, they start cramming to get things done, or they have to really, really uh, uh, cut it down. Know your limitations. Others will want a free ride. Say no, say no often, but you shouldn't have a one and done exercise. You should have an exercise plan. So say no, but not right now. If somebody says, hey, we want to do a water impact for, for an event, taking out the water tower for whatever reason, there's lots of hazards that can take out a water tower. Say, yeah, we'll do that later. If it's a really big scenario, know that you can break that up into a lot of different exercises and target them to different groups. And then if you do, I, I, I know there's some funding agencies in the room, if you do have to do something ridiculous to take out a water tower, a hospital, and some other things, then by all means, this is the time where you can have fun. Like, choose a, choose a movie that you've watched, Sharknado, a zombie attack, an alien attack, and I could take out with a Sharknado, shark spewing acid over my community. Uh, I've done zombie exercises. I've done the Mayan calendar exercise. What's the difference between doing a fictitious exercise and doing one that is, is serious? That first exercise that I told you, all the responders thought that they should be able to, to achieve a successful outcome. It was, it was built around something that they went into it thinking that they could win. If we choose a Sharknado attack, they're not going to think that it's winnable. They'll just roll up their sleeves and say, let's see what we can learn about this. Let's practice our incident command. Let's practice our treatment, our triage, our, our other things. And if you ever find yourself in an exercise situation needing an Arnold Schwarzenegger, a, a Scarlett Johansson, or a Bruce Willis, you're doing it wrong. Thank you.